Hi there. This is Donna again, and this is the yeah July the fifteenth, two thousand fourteen again. And I thought I would do real quick a uh, a book of shadows update, and I would like to go over the difference between my book of shadows and journals and notes and things like that. Just because it's something that's been discussed in starting out solitary and a couple other videos that I've been watching as of late. So I thought I would jump on the bandwagon and, you know, give you guys a little peek into how I do things. So the first thing I want to address is my journal. My journal is not my book of shadows, so they do kind of overlap. My journal is one that I got from Michael's on clearance several years ago. And yes, I've been using the same one for several years because I haven't really been focused 100% on my path over those several years constantly. There was always times that I had to take breaks, things that I need, you know, I needed to put things that I was learning into practice and deal with some life issues and health issues and things like that. So this was upside down, go this way. So yes, this has a little magnetic thingy. I think I paid like a dollar, maybe two dollars for this. They were really, really cheap. And I love it. It is lined. When you open it up, it looks like this. I always leave the very first page blank. Don't know why. Always done it. And in here is where I record tarot readings, what I've been learning, questions that I want to address, things I want to look up, my experiences and meditations and journeys and rituals, spells, and Pretty much, if I do a spell, it's in here, and then I write the, my experiences with it, and then whether it works. And if it does work, it makes its way into my Book of Shadows. That being said, I'm not really one who does a lot of magical working because, well, and I did a video on this, you know, recently because of fear. Um, I was always scared that it would backfire, that yeah, I, over, I overthought it. I really did. And I... <laughs> wasn't taking risks and I realized that there are some things you shouldn't risk and there are situations that are better left in the mundane world you know if you can do it then you should probably you know do it yourself you shouldn't rely on magic but whenever I do magic I always do follow-up actions with it so it kind of reinforces so I'm I'm going to be working on that um, I'm not going to start 10 different spells at one time. I will probably do one as it's needed. I actually did one on the full moon. So waiting for the results on that. Um, the spell was actually designed to span over at least one full moon and take into full effect. So again, waiting on that. And uh, yeah, so this is my journal. This has dreams in it, divination stuff, you know, like my tarot cards. It has my personal thoughts in here. Now, I have this notebook and a few others, but this is the most recent one. It's purple. It's a college ruled 70 page basic notebook. And right now I am actually going through Christopher Penzac's Inner Temple of Wicca. And I should have brought that out. I didn't think to. Um, but I do, I bought a physical copy of the book, and what I've been doing is that every month around the full moon, I read a new section, and then I start putting that into practice. So I read a section, go back, highlight the, high, the points, and not, no, I read the whole chapter, usually, or a whole section or two sections, and then I go back and highlight the points that I want to highlight, and then I copy them down into notes, and then from there, I... I actually cop copy down word for word exercises into this notebook as well, just in case something happens to my copy of the book, I want to have a backup. And if I find that those exercises really helped me, were valuable, and so far all of them have, all the ones that I've done anyway, then those will eventually get written and put into my book of shadows. And also I put my experiences with these in here um, just to keep it more solidified even though I do touch on it in my journal if it, if it if it affects my life 
other than when I'm meditating, then it goes in, in my journal. If it's just focused on that meditation, then it goes in here. Like if, if I'm doing a meditation or no, let's say I'm doing an exercise, energy exercise to feel. If I can only feel it when I'm focusing, then it goes in my notebook. But if I uh, get to a point where I can start feeling energies without really going into a meditative state, then that's when it would be crossed over and put into the journal because this is more my everyday life while this is more just exploring different techniques and building on those. Um, it makes sense to me. It might not make sense to you. You might do it a different way. You might put it all in one spot. I don't. I also started two other notebooks for my tarot cards because I really wanted to make an entire section in my book of shadows for tarot. In order to do that, I need to do some research. I need to really think about what the cards mean to me. So far, I only have one deck of tarot cards, and that's Medieval Cat Tarot. I've had it for years. Um, I recently got an Oracle deck. I haven't started a notebook for that. I need. I actually need a new notebook because I don't have any more. So when I get a new notebook, I will start one for the Oracle cards, too. And basically, let me see if I can find a section that has um, several different... I don't think I do. Well, basically... Each card has its own page. I think I gave two pages. Yeah, I gave two pages to all the major arcana. So the major arcana court cards are in one notebook, and then all of the tip cards are in the other. So this is basically what I do. I label it at the top. I don't know if you can see that. So I get a glare. So it's the sun. This is the number that's associated with the card in this particular deck. This is only for the deck that I'm working with. This is not in general. This is just my impressions from this deck. And in green, I have the definition, not the definition, but the interpretation associated with that card from the little booklet that it came with. Because that's what I started working with. Um, and then in a different colored pen, I plan on putting, maybe doing a little research on that card in general. Um, more like traditional interpretations of the card of being upright and reverse because I do reversals. And then in another color pen, I plan on putting my interpretation. Most of my cards don't really differ from the interpretation that's usually associated with it, but there are a few that come up in specific circumstances for me and for the people I'm reading that are not traditional and those are the ones that I really want to make a point of writing down just because I have it all together so <clears throat> I've got two notebooks for that oh and this is mixed in this is my monthly planner I use this thing like crazy I've got all I've got full moons in here dark moons um, sabbaths holidays, you know, just regular holidays that the whole country, U the USA, celebrates. And then I have, you know, doctor's appointments and birthdays and um, weddings that I have to go to, little celebrations that I'm going to for, like, family. Like, I have my mom's barbecue on the 4th. That's right there. I don't know if you can see that. But, yeah. And then, yeah, so this is really useful. I love this thing. From the dollar store, can't do better than that. I I had one when I was working and I used to record my estimated pay according to how many hours I was supposed to work. So that's how I kept track of sort of like an ongoing estimation of what my paycheck would be the next week. And then I could plan out from there. That's how I budgeted. Now, before I get into my book of shadows, I would like to show you my notes because when I do a page in my book of shadows it's very <laughs> long-winded so basically I have my notes and almost all of my notes no no all of my notes are on loose leaf paper so I have this notebook now if you saw my video before this is the same binder that I originally had my book of shadows in and I moved it it's not in a binder anymore so I use this binder to store my notes and I just I had this ribbon that came with um, actually the candle that I used for my ritual, my full moon ritual. It came in a little box set from, and I got it at a thrift store, I believe, Goodwill, something like that. 
for really cheap, and this is just the ribbon that came with it. It's long enough that I wrap it around and it prevents my papers from falling out because I really don't have too much that are not standard size, um, you know, lined paper or copy paper. So basically, I write everything by hand. I compile my notes together. I try to keep it in one spot. This is not no organized. This is very, very messy over here. But like, let me show you. Like this was from the original Book of Shadows. There, if it's in one of these little protectors, this was from the original Book of Shadows, and it has not made its way into my new Book of Shadows. Once I put it in my new Book of Shadows, I pretty much throw this paper away because there's no point in keeping it. The same information is in my Book of Shadows. I don't need another copy. I have my Book of Shadows. Um, but af after I get all my notes together, I sit at the computer, I take everything. I try to have more than one source, preferably three or more for anything, anything that I write. And I treat every page in my Book of Shadows like an article. Like I'm doing research for something I'm going to hand in at school where I make an outline and then I touch on all the points that I want to touch and then I proofread it, walk away and another day I proofread the second time and walk away and I look at it one more time and if I can't find anything that needs to be edited or changed then I sit down and will copy word for word onto a piece of paper that goes into my actual book of shadows. This is not for everyone. I put way more thought into things that I probably shouldn't <laughs> than other people do. And I'm not saying I shouldn't put thought into my book of shadows. I'm just saying it, it your book of shadows really doesn't need to be that detailed. And, you know, it works for me and I like my system. So that's all that really matters. But I know that a lot of people don't treat their book of shadows like um, a project that's due in school. So that's fine. Got my little ribbon tied, so here we go. This is usually with my notes. I took it out so I could show you. It's a bungee folder, and I like this folder because it's got these little things that kind of keep all my papers together. In this folder, I have templates, and yes, I use templates. Let me show you what I mean by a template. Well, depending on the title page, I use this one, and right here. What I do is I put this underneath the page I'm writing on, and this will give me where, you know, the general size of where I need to put the header and make sure that I don't write in the margins because I don't want to write on the edges just, in, just because it looks more uniform when it's not written that way. But if the header happens to be larger and I know it's go not going to fit, then I use this one, which has, you know, double space for the header. And then I use this when I'm writing so that I can actually stay online because I use print regular printer paper, no parchment, just regular printer paper. And this was actually just me with a ruler, meticulously drawing lines. And no, they're not all perfect, but this is as close to perfect as I could possibly get the paper. And it was time consuming. So I this is what I use. Um, well, usually when I'm writing, I usually put this over the template like this and it has to be a well lit room or I can't see and then I put the piece of paper I'm writing over it and I follow the faint lines I can see the lines I really can my paper is not very thick it's just regular white printer paper after all okay and then uh, for sections I just threw this up the other day this is the template for that now I may be adding more to this but right now every section is pretty much this and there are lines going here there are three lines so that if it's a long titled section that I might do half up here half right here or one word here and one word there or if it's just a shorter one then it goes right in the middle this is and then I I color code it <laughs> just because I I'm a dork and I like doing that I also let me show you have a couple templates that I use for fonts I'm not a professor, professional when it comes to calligraphy. I've never taken a calligraphy class. I don't know what I'm doing with it. I just know that you can go on dafont.com and download fonts that you think are really nice for free because I've done it when I was designing templates and um, websites and stuff like that for forms. But it lets you view 
A to Z, capital and lowercase, and numbers, but I don't, I don't deal with the numbers, so that I can actually look at those and copy them by hand and then be able to use that in my book of shadows because I write everything by hand. Nothing is printed out in my book of shadows. So these are some of the fonts that I use. Now I don't use the top one. I use this middle one right here, this one, and this one. The bottom one is for titles and my sections. And this middle one is more for like uh, subtitles and you know things like that with an article. Like if, if I'm breaking it up into sections and I'm naming each section, then it would be done in this font right there. When I am doing something like a poem, an indication, or a spell or something like that, then the first letter is like this. It's all one of these up here, and then the rest is just my normal writing hand. I actually was considering using this font for the header, but I don't know if you can see that. That is really detailed, and it's really hard to get it the same every time, and it just takes too much time. I mean, too much time. So, no, I don't use that. It's pretty. I may find a way to incorporate it at some point, but no, it's as of right now, no, I'm not using it. Oh, and um, you know the blocks that I just showed you? They were originally going to look like this, and I decided that was just too convoluted, too difficult. Can't really see it, and I didn't like the background, so I'm just leaving those solid color for now. This is a tag, a template for a tag. Um, I haven't really made too many tags any tags at this point. I had a few and then I took them out because I didn't like the way they were set up. So this is in there. This is mainly for something else. I made tags inspired by Monsoon Magic um, for weekly goals and things that I wanted to accomplish. This is one of the templates I use for that. I don't know where the other one is. I'll have to find it. So um, I try to keep all my templates in one spot. Now I do like putting a design on my Book of Shadows, my pages. Most of the pages don't have a design on there yet. The one, every now and then I do a concept, but usually the concept is just ripped off of like a really nice page that I like from the Charmed Book of Shadows, for example. So those ones, yes, they do have an image and there won't be a border, but for the, everything else that pretty much has a traditional title or, you know, doesn't have any other imagery, we'll have some sort of border. And these, were some ideas for the borders. I don't know if you can see it. That I had going. And then there's some on the side. And I've got pages and pages and pages of borders like that. Here's another one. And then here's some more. And then I thought about doing maybe some interactive type of pages, and I had some samples right here. Probably can't see them, they wouldn't make much sense to you, but I, they're more like scrapbook type stuff, and I still may do these. I don't know yet. It just depends on, I would rather get specific equipment to do that, sturdier cardstock, for example. Um, a specific kind of glue to hold everything together. It's probably not necessary, but that's what I would prefer to do. <coughs> and it is my book of shadows, and it is my baby, so I think I should be able to design it the exact way that I want, even if it doesn't make much sense to other people. So, so you have, oh, and when I color things in, because I use a lot of uh, markers, I use this because this came with something that has yeah, you've got like uh, little things like uh, labels for tabs I don't use. And this this clear one is actually clearer than the ones I have, the page protectors, but it's, it's kind of falling apart and broken a little bit. So I put my pages on here and then I draw them in and you can see there's still some, there's like little spots of ink. I don't know if you can see that. And it's permanent ink so it doesn't come out. And that protects that protects um, anything that I'm writing on. I usually get one of my boyfriend's old D&D books because they're the perfect size, just slightly larger than printer paper. So I usually use one of those. 
And now, last but not least, and I know this is getting long, way longer than I anticipated, but I'm, I'm going to show you my book of shadows. Now, normally, I don't have this thing on here. This is on here because I have been working on my book of shadows this week. This is actually the last couple days. Um, filling in some of the titles and things like that. So let me take this part off because I can show you my book better with this off. And all this is is like one of those old five star little things that it's got um, it's got a hole punch that I don't use. I've got a better newer one in there. And it's got pockets and I put all the pens and pencils and and uh, my big eraser and my markers that I use for, for coloring and drawing and decorating in there. Alright, so I'm going to get that out of the way. This is my book. This, I did not buy this. It was left at my house years ago when I was probably in middle school. I believe one of my friends actually took it from her cousin and didn't tell her cousin and then forgot it at my house and then it was lost at my house and when I found it again we weren't friends anymore she didn't live in the same area anymore and I couldn't get a hold of her and I kind of kept it I don't, I don't really know why I kept it but I kind of kept it um, and just never yeah um, I used to have drawings in it I took the drawings out and now I'm using it for my book of shadows. This has posts right here, see? And it, this part is removable. You just put it in, there's a little piece that holds it down so it doesn't get up, which is useful because my cats will destroy it if I lift them. Let me actually fasten that real quick. Use to flip through that way. There was no cover. There's never been a cover to this. So what I did was I put a page protector, just a clear, a clear one, um, just in case anything got spilled or prevent it from wrinkles, things like that. And then a blank page. Actually, let's let's do this. Turn this down. There we go. And then a blank page because, like I, I said before, you know, everything, all my books, they always have a blank page. And then this was kind of ripped off of the Charm Book of Shadows. There you go, and then here's the index. You can't, I don't know if you can see everything, but yeah. Those are little indexes. Little index, the contents, I guess you could say. I like the word index better. I don't know why. And then my book blessing, which I may actually, this, this is just kind of stuck on there with tape. At some point, I'm going to take this off and actually write it in here. And oh, this has the wrong title, which is why it's not colored in. I have to erase it and give it the right title. This is actually The Wiccan Read. And then, see there, here's the first, um, yeah, of course, this is the first section. And then it starts with colors. And then it goes on from there. So this is all, the way I have it set up is, um, it's only written on one side because everything's going to have ink on it and this paper does, is not absorbent. And I couldn't afford the parchment paper that I wanted. So. Yeah. And then I've got charts. And all the correspondences. And then the moon. I'm going to do, I actually have more information to add in this section. A lot more actually. permission in the moon and then it goes all the way through so I have let me see okay so then after I have that I have tools which there's nothing in here yet I gotta I got I have to just make articles for stuff still and then I've got my herbal grimoire which is pretty much anything to do with stones trees herbs plants homemade incense kitchen witchery in general, which I might actually make a herbal grimoire a separate book at some point, but right now, because it's small and there's not much in, in this section, I mean, really, it's just this. Yeah. And then maybe, yeah, and then some Sabbath and Esbat cookies, which I 
think I might have gotten from Charming Pixie Flora, but it might be a different recipe. I can't really remember. When I wrote it down, I didn't really keep track. Then I've got deities. So then I've just got some general creation mix in the beginning. Just not color it in, and then, you know, the four time was. And then I've got specific beauty. Some of them have drawings on it, some of them don't. Some of the drawings I need to redo. And then it goes, first it goes through the aspects of the mother, and I follow the five aspects, not the three, which means there's the maiden, lover, mother, sovereign, and throne. So that's what's in this first section. And then I address some of the aspects of the god. Well, there's a descendant of the goddess. This is specifically um, needs to be actually moved after the god section as well, but and then, I, here we go. And then I've got the lad, the green man, the horn god, slain god, dark god. I actually want to put um, some other aspects in here as well. The holly king and oak king and that myth and some more myths that have to do with them. It's really not fleshed out. And then I have beings and entities, which... Um, I was working through the Shamanic Temple of Witchcraft by Christopher Penzag, and this is where I put some of the information about the worlds, and, you know, three Shamanic worlds, and uh, the deities, and not the deities, but the beings that you might meet there. It's a good book, by the way. I would not recommend doing journeys without someone with you, unless it's just to, like, your inner temple or something really simple like that. Then I have ritual stuff. Oh, and then at the end are specific goddesses and gods that I work with. I haven't really worked with any. Um, I've always been fascinated with Artemis, so she's got her own little section, but nothing's actually written in here about her yet. I do want to go through and add some more about her little associations, things like that. Oh, and then there's the ritual section, which is just... I don't have much on the wheel of the year. It's just an over like a glossing over and doesn't even have the proper title yet. Some of these don't. Um, but this is just a glossing over of, you know, what each Sabbath would generally be celebrated for. No instructions on how to do it. And then it goes into what is this? Celebrating with limited space, which was something that I had to <laughs> work with at our old place because it was much smaller than the one we have now. I'm not saying something since we have a one bedroom apartment. And then it's like writing custom rituals, things that you should take into consideration, or I should take into consideration. So whenever I write a new ritual, I always reference this. And it's pretty long. steps, things that it should require, and then it goes into circle casting, the steps for that, and then sample, um, invocations, educations, steps, things you should consider, purification of space itself, where and when magic should come into play, if magic should be, even be, in, you know, should even be part of that type thing, and, uh, oh, and then there's a section I'm rounding to. And right after all of that, I'm sorry, I, do, I don't really want to show my ritual stuff. Okay. Oh, information on consecration, charging, intent in general. And then there's the shamanic promise ritual that I did when I started working with the shamanic witchcraft. And it goes into prayer. This was, this is a generic term for an entire section that has to do with 
poems, songs, chants, affirmations, invocations and invocations, specific deities, or things that could be invocations and evocations but aren't necessarily, but kind of serve a dual purpose. It's all in here. And then we go into magic. I have a section for magic, and then I have a section for spells, and I have a section for ritual. Why? Because the three to me are very separate. Ritual is celebrating the religion, and you know, the act of opening a circle, closing a circle, things like that. Magic is more devoted on developing a connection to the deities, to nature, to yourself, enhancing your own natural abilities, developing other abilities, things like meditation, visualization, journeys. So I have information in here all about that. This is all about ascension, ascension magic. You know, eventually I'll put in different types of magic, like string magic, candle magic, how to use herbs and magic. Things like that. And then this is I need to rewrite this one, but it's in here because it's really useful and I do reference it, even though I haven't rewritten it yet. And then I've got the shamanic psychology right here, which talks about um, the middle self, higher self, lower self, which came from the temple of shamanic witchcraft. And then second attention exercises also in that same book. Um, think, and it re this really helps you get to thinking, reacting in a different way by changing your daily routine. It's a pretty long section of a lot of stuff. And then uh, this is information about meditation in general. Postures for trance. Which I don't, I usually stick with with one, maybe two different ones, you know, typically sitting up or laying down. <laughs> um, emotional body training, which is something that I really need to work on at this point to help deal with my fears. Hopefully I'll be able to address this at the dark moon. I like doing things like that at the dark moon. It fits in with the introspection type of thing that I always view the dark moon to be a symbol of. And then there's can't read that upside down. Oh, the inner temple. This is a, med a journey slash meditation slash visualization type thing where you actually go to and create your own temple on the astral plane, essentially. Tree breathing. That's a meditation exercise. Journey things which is why I really recommend you not doing journey stuff by yourself. <laughs> I learned that the hard way. That's another video though. I think I actually did a video on that. I mentioned it in passing, if nothing else. And it goes over, you know, agreements, agreements, attunements, battle, council, enlightenment, Exploration, which is usually what I do. Um, you know, just general things, reasons why you would do it, things you would encounter while you're there, just general archetypal things. And this is an introductory journey, which is where you really meet with your own personal world tree and learn how to actually do deeper journey work, which is fine by yourself, but I've never had to promote that, but when you're actually going to one of the worlds in shamanic journey, that's when I, you know, encourage people to do it in partners, just in case. <laughs> and, uh, Earth Mother Journey, I did this, didn't have any problems with it, though now, looking back, I probably shouldn't have done it by myself. And... Power Animal Journey, which is something that I haven't done yet, but I plan on doing soon. 
and I don't think that the power animal journey would be dangerous. So, um, but I still may wait until I have someone to be there with me. So, and then the next section I have Ontario, and there's not much in here, just general things like I have my goals for working with tarot, and then um, initials, which I got from the website, elements associated with the tarot, what they mean, numerology, the numbers and pip cards, and associated with the major arcana, how they, you know, a general energy that affects each card, and then I've just got lots and lots of um, lots and lots of spreads, which I, I'm probably going to redo all these at some point, but right now they work. I don't necessarily like the book front to back, which eventually I might actually make my divination section for Tarot like a separate book as well. And you can tell the recent editions, they're completely different and they're in the same style as the rest of the book. <laughs> These are actually um, some that came from that Oracle deck little book that I like. So I added those in because I do use them. And when I do tarot readings, I usually use both Oracle and Material all in one go, all together. And then last, I have spells. And there's only two in the book at the moment. More will be added later. But one for, oh, this is a little article on spell creation, very short, very to the point, and then I have my money spell, which is very effective. This actually, this helped me get money by helping me get a job, so I really like this one. <laughs> I've used it before, and it's, my baby, it was the first spell that I actually performed that worked. So, yeah. It has a special little place, the first one in the book, and then releasing spell, which is really nice for when you're doing inner work. And I'll be doing probably this on the dark moon, releasing some of the fears and stuff that I have. And that is the end of my book. So, I know, it's a very, very, very long video. I apologize. Thank you for sticking around to watch. And I guess I'll see you guys later. Bye.